Well, I'm quite literally having one of those mornings this morning. I've been and moved the cows, but there is a problem with the corvus. Can you hear that? That's the drive shaft rattling. So we spoke to Colin Catley, I'm gonna to have to take that up to him and they're gonna have a look at it and see if they can order the parts. But I've gotta go and finish getting the cows done first because I am on my own, flying solo this week, um, like Jason Derulo. Is it Jason Derulo that does that song? I don't know, but whoever. They're flying solo, so right, riding solo. Anyway, whatever, my, my point still stands, I'm on my own. So we're gonna to have to go and get these cows finished before I can take the buggy up to Colin because I don't know if he's gonna to wanna to keep it or not. Oh, it's the joys. That being away though does mean, however, I am getting the opportunity to do things that I enjoy. Not that I don't enjoy the things I normally do, but do other things that I enjoy. Like moving the cows. We've got a group of stabilised cows, and then the bottom of Shilton Hill over there. We're gonna go now, give them a bale of hay, and then we're also gonna go and move them onto a fresh bit of grass. Oh no, I've got, now the electric gate's not working. Oh, yeah, no it is, it is, it is, don't worry. Don't panic. No, it's not, it's not working. Why? What's going on? Come on, what's wrong with you? Oh. <sighs> Typical. As ever, Dad has given me the trusty mineral pot lid. I honestly don't know what we do if we ever start using magnesium boluses because you can't write it on a bolus. Where are we? Front Shilton Hill, 2402. That's what the cover is in this. Got one bale of hay and a 0.485 of a hectare a day. Gotta get the map out. Let's go there, there. And then that fence probably went about just about there. No, it needs to be bigger than that. Bring her up here, bring her up here. Four, eight, yeah, that'll do, that'll do. All right, somewhere about here. This is one of them herbal lay fields that's been down a couple of years now, but um, it needs a proper fence around it. So this is all just temporary stuff at the minute, but it works, it works. That said, anyone who's watching this that came to our discussion group meeting will know that it's easy enough to keep these cows in, keeping our young stock in, that's, that's been the challenge. All right, this side must be about here somewhere. So now I've got to give them some hay. This is the first time that I've actually done this on my own. So I apologize profusely to anybody who's watching this in disgust, probably my dad because he does it all the time. He's like, oh, you're doing that wrong. Put a bit of slack off of the winch. Push it. Now we roll. I took the bailing roller off to go and get the water trough and drag it up into this paddock. And then I've just remembered that it's forecast to absolutely chuck it down with rain tonight for quite a few hours as well. So I'm thinking I might just give them the run of both paddocks rather than make a mess on one paddock. So I'm gonna actually just take that fence up and leave the water trough where it is because the water trough's on an old margin that's gonna be ripped up anyway. So if they make a mess around that, that's not gonna be a problem. I think that's probably a good idea. I'll just leave it. Could we just talk about that as well? How joyful is that? Can you hear him? That's amazing, isn't it? Just, oh. We are very lucky, very lucky to be able to do this every day. So these guys are all the stabiliser cows. They're all in calf. We've PD'd them the other week. I believe these are 96%, something like that. No, 94%. There's a few more of the blues. Um, but whatever's not in calf now is, is in the shed that's being fattened or is gone. And then anything that's in calf is still out. So all the in calf blues and old Angus cows are still out of Thornton. I could honestly sit and watch them cattle all day. But as is always the case, there's something else to bloody do. Just pulled into Cattley's yard. Hey up, hey up. Someone's got the Daiichi, Daiichi, whatever they're called. Look at it, look at this. Oh, fancy. Very fancy. Gonna uh, put this in the workshop and see whether the boys can work out what's wrong with it, but I'm pretty sure it's that drive shaft that's playing us up. 
So we dropped the buggy off with Mr. Catley and he's having a look at it, he's getting it on the ramps because we have had another drive shaft on it back in July and this is the second drive shaft. So the first one went, but it done about five and a half thousand miles. He's now done 8,600 miles and the second one's gone and it's that UJs have, have broke. We don't really know why. So he's got it on the ramp to take some pictures of it and just have a bit of a, a closer look really. And he kindly dropped me off back at the farm so I could get some jobs done. Ho ho ho, special delivery. And yes, I need to clean the windows. Let's, let's brush over that. This is a little accessory for the bale and roller. It's taking some getting into. No, it's not a massive bird cage. Oh, bird, bird bell and roller hat. This is courtesy of Mr. Tom Burge. This thing is cool. I'll explain in a minute. Here we go, here we go. Oh, it's like past the parcel. This is more and more stuff to unwrap. Any ideas? No? Nothing yet? Nothing yet? Know what it is yet? So this thing is an accessory for the bale and roller. This effectively fits on the bale and roller like a bale does. So it sits in the cradle and the bars go in here, either end. And it's for moving water pipe. So in the summer, when you're not using the bale and roller to unroll bales, because you've got lots of grass, you can use the bale and roller to move your water pipes. Now we're actually looking at putting some more permanent water infrastructure in place and upgrading the water pipe around the farm from 20 mil to 32 mil and having more static troughs in fields. But that doesn't mean that we'll actually move away entirely from using rotational troughs. And at this time of year, Something like this will be amazing because we will move water troughs a lot when we've got deferred grass and we're keeping cattle quite tight and putting bales in and not letting them move too quickly because we're trying to keep them out. So this thing is going to be an absolute lifesaver. Thank you, Mr. Burge. Oh, and if you do want to have one of them bale and rollers, just Burge bale and roller. Go, just Google it. I'll see. Game changer. Now I just got to find somewhere to put this bloody thing until I get myself some pipe. The guys at Catley's have absolutely knocked out of the park of this one. So I said that we looked like the drive shaft had gone because that UJ was rattling. Well, it turns out that that UJ down here had actually lost a circlip. So if you don't know what a circlip is, just imagine like the letter C. If you imagine a clamp, a clamp goes around the outside of something and clamps on. A circlip is like the opposite. So a circlip sits inside and you spring it inwards and then you put it in and then it pops open. So it kind of clamps from the inside rather than the outside. A circlip had come off and that was what was making it rattle. They managed to put a new one on and so far, so good. So fingers crossed, it was just one of them things. I've also had to crack the woolly hat out and the Torremor fleece because it is so cold right now. I've even got gloves in my pocket. That's how cold it is. It's been snowing and everything is minging, but you know what it's like on this game. You just have to keep going. So we've got to go over to Thornton and feed some cows. Luckily though, the Corvus comes with a heater, which is surprisingly effective when you've not got a door. a big fan of snow. It has its place, don't get me wrong, but its place ain't here. I like the cold. I like it when it's cold, it can be minus five, minus ten, I don't care. As long as it's cold, crisp, those blue skies you get when it's nice winter's days, I'll take that all winter long. But snow, snow can, yeah, you fill in the gap. One thing I will say about snow though, it is pretty pretty annoying. So the job here, we got, this is a big move today because we've got to get cows are on the field in the middle over there. We've got to bring them up onto the top field. So we've got to put fence from this post all the way over to the wood over there, graze them on this paddock. We've got to roll three bales out on this paddock for them because there's not really much grass left up here. They're just kind of rotating around having all their feed from hay and then we keep them moving every couple of days so that that hay gets spread across the field. So it's you know, everything's kind of put back somewhere. So we've got to put a fence up here, and then we've got to fence down that field so that they've got access back to water, even though they're probably not going to realistically drink much while the weather is like this. But 
we still do it anyway. So, big move. There's a lot of work to do, so best crack on. Good one, good one, good one. Take that one. I don't know if you're going to see this on the video, but just by the cows, there's two really white birds. And me being a bit of a bird freak, I reckon that's a pair of egrets, which is quite rare. But we're near Thornton Reservoir here. Like the reservoir is literally one field away. So I reckon I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Look, look, look. Can you see them up by the hedge? There's one you can see, definitely. I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Wow, I've never got this close. It is an egret. How close we are to it. Hello, little one. I'm going to have to upset it now because I need to let the cows through. Migrants. I'm pretty sure that they're from Africa or they're something like that. They're not native to here, but I think wherever they come from, they spend a lot of time around cattle because look, they're bloody back. Loving it. Bale grazing some egrets. I've got a bit of an issue. I can't get my electric fence kicking. I don't know why, but it's just not kicking out. The fence is working, but I'm getting nothing through the fence and it's baffling me. I'm trying to work out if this green flashing light here is because there's an earth shortage and maybe there should be a red flashing light. Because as you can see, the clip is on there and there's an earth stake driven into the ground here and that's on, so God knows. But look, if I put my tester on there, I'm getting absolutely nothing. Now Google tells me that a green flashing light is a good thing on a Gallagher fencer, so I don't know. Great. I've now plugged the fencer directly onto the tester and I'm getting 7.4. 7.2, 7.3, clip it on the fence, and nothing. What the hell? I don't know, but that just makes me feel like there must be one hell of a short somewhere up this electric fence. So let's just drive it and have a look. Everything seems up around here. What about this? No, that that's all up this is all up and that's all up because i've just put that up huh i actually don't know i don't know oh honestly i don't bloody know i'm just gonna leave it they won't get out they'll be fine they've got no grass to get out to they're getting fed on bales they'll be fine 
I'll have to just come back with a different fencer and see if I can get it going. Sometimes I just think they can't be bothered to work. You know, like when you wake up some mornings, you're just like, oh. I think that's what the fence is feeling like. I think the fence is feeling a bit meh. Been out here all summer. It's got cold, it can't be bothered. I just thought that my hands were cold and I uh, remembered that I bought gloves. There's just no helping some people and I'm one of them. Right, I'm back at the yard. I've got my gloves on, my toes are cold. It's getting dark and I think I'm done for today. So why not join us next week where I run around in the cold and the rain and the wind and the snow and try and convince myself that I'm not going insane. Whatever you get up to this weekend, have a good one, and I'll see you in a bit. ta -da. Hey, if you haven't seen it already, why not check out this video, or you can subscribe by clicking on that logo. Alternatively, head to www.boldiesfarm.com where you can read more about the farm, check out some blog posts, or treat yourself to some of the amazing clothing that we wear here every single day. Cheers.